the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Let's Lord. Let's going to the Love lesson. it. All right. So, God bless you, and let's press forward. One of the things I wanted to, to talk about today is unless a seed dies, uh, or, or this one, you, you'll call it, watch this, is the time, is the time. It says, teaching Yeshua's way, it is written, a separate corner wheat falls into the ground and dies. And, and that's really talking about the fact is I, that's why I used to translate it unless a seed die. And for us, we have to, unless we don't, if we don't conform, and it's not talking about uh, spiritual death or to a degree, it's, it's talking about being born again. Christ had to die in order to bring us to that born again connection back to God. He, he died. That's what we just had Resurrection Sunday for, was that he died for us to come back and connect back to God. And so therefore, he used in John 12, and we're going to go to that, is the fact is that unless we die to self, and Paul said, I die daily. See, we're not talking about physical, we're talking about spiritual. Die daily so that we can move from glory to glory to glory. Uh, and when we die, we're dying to self. We're dying to the, the, the old way of thinking, the old way of acting, the, the old way of, of, of carnality, and start focusing on the newness of life. I mean, the newness of life. So let's, let's look at that. Uh, and always remember, Romans 12, 14, 12 says that um, so every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And that's why it's important for us to conform to his image and move away from our own selfishness. Amen. All right. So we'll go ahead and cover this real quick. It says in John 12, starting in verse 20. And I thought it was interesting because it's, it's, this was the first time the world, people from outside of Israel, wanted to come and speak to Yeshua. And let's just ride what he was trying to say, because to me, this, this one, this chapter, this section, was a introduction to the kingdom of God outside of Israel. That's how, that's how it seemed to me when it came up. It said in that John 12, starting in verse 20, and there was a certain Greek among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came there for the Philip, which was of the fair of Galilee, and desired him saying, sir, we will see Yeshua. Some of y'all say, well, I keep saying Yeshua is under Jesus. Yeshua is his Hebrew name. So that's why I said that. Okay. Philip comes and tells Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Yeshua. <laughs> and Yeshua answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, what are you saying to that? He was using that as a parable. He was talking about the fact is that here, self, who came to, to redeem us, to teach us and then to pay for the sins of this world, man committing the sins of this world. That he came to pay the price for the transgressions 
and link us back to God. And what people have done since then is try to be God, try to be the bridge. And there's only one bridge, there's only one way to God the Father. And that is through the Son, Yeshua. And His way. He said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Most of us want to do it our way. Most of us want to sit there and get, get they want to be glorified. And they, they, they want glorification from man. Where what Christ is saying is that the glory is when we glorify the Father in heaven. Woo! I tell you something, man, it ain't be right there. It's, it's the fact is that we glorify the Father in heaven. Just like Christ glorified the Father in heaven. If we glorify God, God glorifies us. We need to sit there and understand that it's not about pleasing man, but pleasing God. Now look at this. And, and the fact is that if you want to bear fruit, and the word of fruit, we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is found in Galatians 22, 23, 5, chapter 5, 22, 23. Now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So he said you, you can't bring forth much fruit. You can't even bring others into the body of Christ if you don't understand being in the body yourself. If you don't understand that it's not about pleasing man. If you don't understand that it's not about racism. It's not about separation. It's not about division. It's about the, the glorifying God. Not glorifying the flesh. See, that's where racism comes from, right? Glorifying the flesh. <laughs> and and, and the, the people that want that message, they want to say they glorify the flesh. And they think that glory comes from that. Those are some of all those kingdoms, and, and, they, and they told Christ, and the devil said, Of all these nations and kingdoms, and all their glory I give unto you, unless you bow, if you bow down to me. And some people have taken up and tried to get glory from, from, from the flesh, glory from nationalism, and all that other stuff. Is and, 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 and destroy, and those people want to destroy our country. And the fact is, it's about the fact is that our nation is one nation under God, not a nation of division, but a nation of unity, a nation that wants to move forward. And that's what we're going to be doing, amen. But the fact that they said you can't bring forth good fruit, you can bring forth corrupt fruit because that's easy to do. But to bring forth good fruit, that requires the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us. Amen? But he said, he said, in verse 24 again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, a separate corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, and the vine is not. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He that loveth his life, see what they're saying? We're talking about dying, we're talking about spiritual death, we're talking about here. And then the, we, see, we're born spiritually separated, disconnected from God. Christ gave us the ability to be born again. Amen? And, and Christ had to die on the cross, be buried, and three days rose again. But he said, unless that seed, he had to die in order to bring in to be the first of many brethren. He died for the world. And some people don't like that, but that's, some people, I mean, really, some people don't like the fact that he died for the world, but that's what he did. He died for the world. So that the world, he died for the ungodly. Who, who fits that category? The world. <laughs> but the fact is, he said that he had to die. If not, uh, he had by his alone. That's what he was saying. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life and this world, talk about this world system, shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serves me, let him follow me. I'm not talking, I'm telling you, sir. That's, I think that's when we run into the problem. We try to follow. Ministry is most important to Christ. So he's the way. That's what he wants to do. 
it will equip you to point, equip the saints to point the people to the way, to Christ. Not to your ministry. And that's, see, that's one thing. A lot of cases, that's what I'm saying. Ministry is teaching people, bring people to the ministry. Ministry should be teaching the individual ministry, the, the, the congregation, the people who do the work of the ministry. It's important to Christ. We'll be more successful if we to a Christ instead of pointing to a ministry. Because some ministries try to conform to the world. Some people try to please the world. That's why you sometimes have separations of, we call this a white church or black church or a Korean church or, or, or Native American church or any other thing. Is the fact is that we want to point toward those things, appointing intention instead of educating and, and encouraging our people, our ministry, our congregation to point to Christ. And, and if you get to the point of Christ, I guarantee you that they might come to you because they're learning, they're seeing what you're doing and you're in the ministry that you're in. If you let people become effective, you let people become educated and learn the knowledge of the Word of God and go out there and minister the things of God, the people who see them may come back to that ministry so that they can get that same teaching and foundation so they can go out and point people to Christ. But it's all about pointing to Christ, not pointing to it Manage it, not pointing to self, but pointing to Christ. That's what he said in 26. If any man serves me, I'm not serving a ministry. I'm not, you're not serving a ministry. You're serving Christ. You're part of the body of Christ, saints. And I think we'll be very effective ministry, equipping the saints to the work of the ministry. People, you are ministry. You're a little more small ministries. Point toward Christ. Show the love of God that Christ wants us to serve toward one another. People will see that. Your actions, bearing good fruit, is what people see that glorifies God. Let them follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servants be. If any man serves me, him will my Father honor. Well, honor. See, do you want honor from man or do you want honor from God? I submit to you that we do better serving and glorifying God. Amen? I mean, that's what you said. And if you want honor, you'll get it from God. What's the greatest honor to have? It's from God, not from man. I'm telling you, man will tear you up. John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled. This is Christ because he's getting ready to be crucified. He knows his hour is coming where he will have to pay for the transgressions of mankind. He has he's been here in ministry for 33 years. That's what we're celebrating in, in, in the uh, last Resurrection Sunday. Some of you call it Easter Sunday. But the bottom line is, it was the, the his death, the blood shed in in, in the garden of vicinity, the blood shed when it was beaten in the, in, the, in the courtyard with the Romans, soldiers. The blood shed on that cross was to redeem us, to remove sin from us, so that we could be connected back to God and be a part of the body of Christ that he rose again. My soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, knowing that that time is coming close. Even Christ, I mean, a lot of things we try to do to the will of Father. We have, there's some, sometimes our flesh want to go another way. But we do the same thing that Christ did. He said this, but for this cause came I unto this hour. That was the cause. He said in the God of the Sinai, the same thing. He said, let this cup be pass, but nevertheless, let that will be done. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. It was interesting when I read that, it was saying that glorify Christ was saying, you know, I, I used to sit there and think, glorify me. <laughs> think about it. Glorify me. And then it's like, oh, but he said, glorify that name. Christ said, glorify 
thy name. Interesting. And you know, what name is talked about? Well, the fact is that he, his name is Yeshua, right? And, and it said, glorify thy name. And God has many names, right? <laughs> but Christ said, ask in my name. So we talk about his name, Yeshua. Glorify thy name. And then it said, like I said, that voice came to heaven. Then there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, think about now, listen, this is the first time the outside world, from what we know of, wanted to see Yeshua. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, I mean, they heard the voice of God said that it thunderous. Others said an angel spake to him. So they know that there's something in the atmosphere that responded to Christ. And I suspect those Greeks were there as well because they were looking for Christ. And I think that was it was an introduction to the world. Hey, that there's a God. There is the God who's speaking to Yeshua, who was speaking to the importance of dying on the cross and rising again the third day. Amen. <laughs> and he said, now is the, he said, he, Jesus answered, verse 30, 12, 30. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me. Hmm. But for your sake. <laughs> See, I think that's the whole point we need to understand. It's not about trying to glorify self. It's about glorifying God. And God will demonstrate who he is for all of us if we sit there and glorify him and do his will. Amen? <laughs> he said, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. I'm going to say and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, would draw all men unto me. If I die, if I'm put on that cross, I will draw all men unto me because my, I'm taking all their sin and I'm introducing them to the relationship of God the Father. Come on, man. Oh man, beat myself out. I gotta, oh man, wait a minute. In John 36, <laughs> while you have light, believe in the light that you may be the children of light. These things made Yeshua and departed and did hid himself from them. Let me come off again. Real quick, real quick, real quick. But he, he just saw some very powerful pieces there. I like the first part about the fact is that he say, he constantly said to glorify the Father. I said, glorify that name. The name, not me, not a person. But the name. The name above all names. And that's why I'm sitting there saying the name that's in Yeshua. Because that's the name that he was called. And what does that name mean? It means salvation. Huh? He said glorify salvation. Glorify deliverance. Glorify redemption. <laughs> this is about glorifying. And the fact is, I like the fact is, did he, 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 he said, and let your will be done. Let your will be done. That's what I'm more concerned about. That's what I want to focus on. Let your will be done in life, huh? Man, and, 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 and like the fact is, he, he was the, 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 the voice of God was heard so that the world, just like they did in Mount Sinai with the whole children of Israel, when God spoke to them about the Ten Commandments. And instead of understanding and taking and receiving the word of God, they say, Lord, 
that was a gen that was an Exodus 20. Where they sit there and said, Lord, uh, you talk to Moses, basically. Moses, you, you talk to God and we'll listen to you. That that was a, a, a tragedy in itself because I think even today people sit there and want and believe that their pastor or their minister or their mother that's in, in Christ is the one that would talk to God on their behalf and under, not understanding that God wants a personal relationship with you. He needs you to die to yourself spiritually, die to the old, let that old man die and let that new man be born again in you and have a personal relationship with God. Every last one of us need to have a personal relationship with God. Because that scripture I said in Romans 14, 12, every last one of us will give an account unto God. But if we sit there and have a relationship with him, and then Christ has opened the door, Christ gave the way. That's why he's important. The way to the Father. That's the objective. The way to the Father, saints, is what we want to be able to do. And when he's when God spoke from heaven, the Greeks who came to see Christ, the other Israel, you know, the children of Israel, heard it as well. And Christ said it was done for your sake so that you can understand that God has a relationship with the Son, and the Son is here to pay that price so that we, each individual, ministry, teacher, to have a relationship with God. That's what we want to be able to do. And then, you know, the thing about it is that Christ said that, that, that the peace of and then at John 13, John 31, he said, now is this, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out so that you can start focusing on God. He said in 32, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me, unto him, ministries, individuals, saints as individual ministries, draw people point toward Christ, toward us, point toward Christ, because that what makes a difference. If we do, if we let us be, you know, focus on Christ, and we do that by letting our light shine. And our light shine. You know, the light is not talking about a candlestick or a flashlight or the sun light. It's talking about your deeds, your deeds, your actions. We talk about bearing fruit. It's not talking about the fruit itself that's tangible. It's talking about your actions. It's talking about your deeds. Where is your love? Where is your joy? Where is your peace? Where is your long suffering? That's for us. Every last one of us message for you, message for me, is to, to glorify God and bear much fruit. Amen? And be light in the world. So that people can see and let your light shine out of darkness. Because in this world we have darkness. But in we're talking about not, like I said, not the sunlight, saying It's talking about the, the concept of good versus evil. And what's evil? Well, I'm telling you, son, some people say, well, 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 well some things are good for some people and not even for other people. Well, you kill somebody. Let's go to the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not false, bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not steal. Hmm? Thou shalt not covet to the neighbor's wife. Huh? Let, let's talk about those things. Let's talk about those tangible things. Let's talk about those actions. Because those 10 commandments are based on actions. Or what you should not do. <laughs> and therefore, you'll be light. Your light shine by bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us. There is no law. When we go there and bear good fruit, we're showing and letting our light shine. So that's what I'm telling you. When we talk about racism, we talk about even these empires that existed. And all the fact that all they did is drew, draw more people to attack them until they fall. And then those nations be attacked and they fall. See, the repetitive and continual situation of death and death. Because not be trying to bear good fruit, but trying to bear bad fruit. God is sitting there saying that a nation or an individual are 
glorified by God, by bearing good fruit, doing good things to people. Let your light shine. Your actions are your light. Your actions are the fruits of the Spirit, not not your flesh. And it, I, you know, I deal with people that got with all this other hate or hate. That that that's not that's not what God is looking for. Amen. So let's go back to this. Your light is your actions. And you need to die to self so that you can bear good fruit, bear, bring the light. Amen. He says that he says right here, in 37. But though he has done so many miracles, look at this now, saints. And all of us in the world. That's that's interesting. It says, but though he has done so many miracles before miracles before them, yet they believe not on him. Verse 38, that the saying of Isaiah, the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? <laughs> it's about revelation, about God. Therefore, they could not believe. Because that Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes. Not God. The God of this world. And hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. The God of this world has Basically, and it's said in that scripture, it's blinding their eyes. Why is he blinding your eyes? See, see, that's what I'm trying to make sure you understand. Your light is your actions. Because what is the purpose of blinding the eyes? Because it's not, look, he's trying to keep you from looking from, out, looking outside your eyes and seeing that your light, your light is your actions, and if they don't see good fruit, then they, they're going to continue to do bad fruit. And that's why you get some people to do things and think they, they hurt some people and think they're doing God's will. And pose the fact is that God wants you to let your light shine, and your light is not shining based on your hate or the anger or your abuse or your rejection, but based on your love. Oh man, I think that's important. Your love is the light. Your joy is the light. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Huh? Love, joy, peace. Your peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding come from God Almighty. <laughs> it ain't going to come from the world. We know that. It ain't going to come from you. It ain't going to come from me. It ain't going to come from him. <laughs> because I know the world wants to give you, want to take your peace away. The world want to take your joy away. The world want to take your love away. <laughs> if the world wants to take your patience, it wants to take your goodness, it wants to take your love, your gentleness, it wants to take away your weakness, it wants to take away your self-control, your temperance. But you sit there and understand that you bear fruit because it's the Holy Spirit and you're not the evil of this world, man. But unbelief, despite the miracles that was done, to the children of Israel, they could not see him, did not receive him, because they were looking for something in the flesh. And how many of us are looking for something in the flesh? And how many nations are looking for something in the flesh? Opposed to the fact that let our light shine. We want to talk about freedom and liberty. Let's do that, man. Let our light shine about the principles of democracy. Let's do that, because you got people who are threatening democracy. We got people in this country that want to threaten democracy. And they want to do it because, well, you know, I want democracy, but I don't want it for these people. Then that's not, then you're not letting your light shine. Your light shine by saying freedom for one, freedom for all. Justice for one, and justice for all. That's when light shines. Not 
looking at somebody over oh, they they just suspicious. Oh, look at them because they, they, they're supposed to be ignorant because we don't want them to remember they came from a great nation, a great civilization, because we're, we're afraid of them. So it's better to oppress them and keep them down opposed to the fact is, hey, now, if they glorify God, I can live with that kingdom. As long as the nation under God. Huh? <laughs> oh man, but unbelief is causing people to bear bad fruit. Unbelief caused wars and endless wars, destruction and violence. We can do, right now we have the ability to destroy this entire world because of unbelief. Because they're not seeing light shine, they're seeing darkness. You know, when they talk about the gap theory, somebody said, what's the gap theory? Some of the fact is that in Genesis 1, verse 2, it said, gross darkness come the earth. Meaning evil. People with bitterness, hate. Especially if they sit there and, 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 and decide to use nuclear weapons and, and destroy this world. I suspect those who survive would be bitter and angry because they could not understand the importance of loving one another. Let our light shine. Every time you see the populace, the populace, did this all about fighting and killing and surviving every man for himself. That's what the enemy does. Instead of everyone coming together and loving one another, showing that light, letting the light shine. But the, the, that verse 20, that John 12, 40, says he has blinded their eyes the devil evil spirits or the flesh the man has blinded the eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart to be converted and Christ said that I should heal them I can heal the nation if they don't harden their heart. I can heal the nation if they seek to understand my words, my wisdom, my love. That is what the gospel is about. That is what your actions should be about. Amen? Let's go to the next one here. And then we'll see about wrapping it up here. And I'm going to do John 15, hopefully next week, God's willing. But I do want, I thought this was important because it's, it's this, here it's talking about the introduction of Christ to the world. And the, and the, the Greeks heard it. In John 12, 41, these things as Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believe of him. But because of the Pharisees did not confess him that they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And when you think about it, how many of us, when you think about it, how many of us want the praise of men over the praise of God. How many of us who try to be conformed to the image of the people to get the praise of the people instead of the praise of God? How many of us allow ourselves to, to confess the world's way? Confess, I guess, ungodliness opposed to God because you know you're afraid that you won't get the praise of men. How many of us are focused on the peer pressure of life? How many of us? I think most of us. And that's why we need to sit there and analyze where we need to go. Amen. Alright, well God bless you. I hope you have a great Sunday and a great week and I will uh, see what I see you 
enjoy talking to you. <laughs> I think it's a blessing to go into God's word and it's a blessing for whoever, whosoever gets to hear it. Amen. Uh, that's all. And then equip yourself so you can do the work of the ministry. That's what it's all about. That's what I think it's all about. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'm going to sit there. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.